Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about proprioceptors, and proprioceptors are another type of mechanoreceptors. So if you saw my video on the general senses, you'll see that mechanoreceptors are going to be tactile receptors, bar receptors, and proprioceptors. So let's go ahead and start talking about proprioceptors. So first, what do proprioceptors do? Well, what proprioceptors do is they sense your body awareness in space. So what do I mean by this? If you were to close your eyes and imagine, think of your left hand, okay? You don't need to see your left hand to know where your left hand is. In fact, I can move it right now and I still know the motions that it's making. That's proprioception, my body's awareness in space. I know it's only about so far from my body. I know I'm palms up right now. I know my, my elbow is bent. That's proprioception. Your body always wants to know its awareness in space so you can do things like keep your balance. Okay. Your body does this subconsciously, basically all the time, subconsciously, basically all the time. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell your position of the joints. Okay. We're going to look at the amount of tension on your ligaments and tendons. And it also measures the state of muscle contraction. Okay, so this is the way that we're going to basically do our proprioception. This is what the proprioceptors are going to sense to see our, our awareness of where our body is in space. Okay, so now there's three types of proprioceptors I'm going to be talking about. The first one is going to be free nerve endings. And if you see my other videos on, on receptors, free nerve endings are basically found all over the body. This is not the first time we've mentioned free nerve endings. There's gonna be the Golgi tendon organ. And then we're gonna have muscle spindles. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first one we're gonna talk about are free nerve endings. Okay, so now we're going to look at free nerve endings, and basically the free nerve endings are going to be exactly like they are. They're just free nerve endings, unlike encapsulated nerve endings, which we talked about on tactile receptors. So let's take a look at these real quick and what their function is. And like we said, these are going to sense a joint's position in space. Okay, which is basically what proprioception is. But the other thing it's going to do is it's going to measure the amount of pressure on a joint. It's going to measure the amount of tension in the ligaments and tendons. Okay, and the other thing it's going to do is it's going to sense movement. Now, after it does this, it's going to send the signal up to the brain. But let's take a, before we go to that, let's take a look at this real fast. And again, this is my joint capsule here. It's made up of dense fibrous tissue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna exaggerate this. I'm gonna draw a part out here and make this kind of larger so we can draw inside of it, okay? So just pretend like this is still part of my joint capsule here. And inside this joint capsule, you are going to have proprioceptors, right? You're gonna have the, the receptors. So this is my, um, free nerve ending right here. And you have more than one. You have, you have a whole bunch of these in here. So this is going to be the end of my proprioceptor here, the end of my free nerve ending here, okay? And then what's going to happen is this is going to attach to a dendrite, right? Because this is actually the end of the dendrite, right? And so this is my dendrite here. And then this is, um, this is my receptor right here. So as you move, right, or stand or anything else, what's going to happen is you are going to get changes on this, on this uh, receptor. And when you do, what's going to happen is you're going to get channel gates that are going to open, and then we're going to get ions that go into here, okay? And then what that's going to do is that's going to send an action potential, which is going to go down the nerve, and from the nerve, it's going to go 
to the posterior column of the spinal cord. It's going to go up to the brain, and then in the brain, it's going to go to the, the vestibular apparatus in the middle ear, as well as other places. But they work closely with the vestibular apparatus in the middle ear, which I'll be doing a video on the vestibular apparatus. So that's it for free nerve endings. Like we said, they're going to sense joint position, so they're usually found around joints. They're going to sense the pressure, the tension on the ligaments and tendons, as well as movement. Okay, now let's take a look at muscle spindles. So let's talk about muscle spindles now. And what, you, what you're looking at here is a muscle. Okay, this, is, this part here where you see the brown, that's going to be the contractile part of the muscle. And we call this part of the muscle the extrafusal fibers. So these are extrafusal fibers. Okay, and then if you notice, our extrafusal fibers come together and they basically attach to a tendon. And that's going to be this blue part here the tendons. The, the tendons then attach to the bone. And what normally happens is these extrafusal muscles, fibers, I'm sorry, will contract. And when they contract, what they will do is they will pull the tendon and the tendon will pull the bone, which, which is basically what's happening right here. As I do this with my arm, right? So the extrafusal muscles can, or fibers contract, they pull on the tendon, and then the tendon pulls the bone. Where you see these in here, these are going to be called our intrafusal fibers. And if you notice, I have two different types. Now, I'm not going to go too much into these, but these uh, circles here are the nuclei. And this is called a, a bag intrafusal uh, fiber, and this is going to be called a chain intrafusal fiber. So we have the intrafusal fibers, and these fibers basically make up the muscle spindle. So now, what's going to happen is this. The function of the muscle spindles is going to measure the length of the muscle, or it actually the change of the length of the muscle, and the velocity or the speed of which it changes. So our, our muscle spindles basically are responsible for sensing the length of the mu muscle and the velocity in which that length changes. Okay, so now let's take a look at how this works. If I go over here, you'll notice I, I've drawn an arm here. So let's say that you are somewhere and somebody throws something to you, okay? And you go to capture, you go to catch it, right? Well, as you go to catch it, what's going to happen is the muscle length is going to change. Okay, let's say you're, I used to work in a grocery store. We used to throw around 50 pound bags of salt that you put in a water softener. Someone throws that to me. I go to catch it. I'm gonna get a change in the length of the muscle. As I get a change in the length of the muscle, what's going to happen is these intrafusal fibers or the muscle spindle is going to send a signal to the spinal cord. All right, so I'm gonna get a signal that's going to come down on here. It's going to come into the back of the spinal cord, and then it basically splits into two. All right, and what's going to happen now is I am going to get another signal that is going to be sent back, and it is going to basically tell this muscle here to contract, right? So when I go to catch, catch something and my muscle lengthens quickly, this is gonna send a signal so that way I, it, my muscle contracts and when it contracts, I can hold whatever it is. Another example would be imagine that you're holding something heavy, like a bunch of books or something, and somebody puts another book on and your, your, mu your muscles lengthen very quickly and then you contract basically to hold, so you can hold the books, okay? Now, at the same time that this is contracting, we want this back here, to relax. So what's going to happen is I am going to get another impulse that is going to come to the muscle back here and cause this one to relax, right? Because I don't want them both contract at the same time. So just to reiterate what happens again, I get some type of load on my arm, right? When I do, I get lengthen of the muscle. And when we get that lengthen of the muscle, a signal is going to be sent 
to the spinal cord. And what's going to happen is I'm going to get another signal that's going to come back and cause the muscle to contract, right? At the same time, I'm going to get another signal that's going to come back here and cause this to relax. By the way, this here that's called telling it to relax is called reciprocal inhibition. Okay, and basically it tells that muscle to relax there, right? So in this case, I'm getting my contraction. Here I'm getting, it, I'm getting relaxation. Let's do another example because this is also responsible for deep tendon reflexes, right? So if I were to take a reflex hammer and hit onto this tendon right here on my knee, the patella tendon, what's going to happen? As it hits, I'm going to change the shape of this patella tendon right here inward just a little bit with the reflex hammer. Okay, I'm kind of exaggerating here. But as this comes in, it causes this muscle to stretch. It's going to cause this quadricep to stretch just a little bit. As it stretches, well, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to get a signal because now we've had a quick stretch of that muscle. It's going to go to the spinal cord, and then I'm going to have an impulse that's going to come back, and it's going to cause this muscle to contract. At the same time, it would cause these hamstring muscles back here to relax, right? So now what happens when you somebody tests your reflexes on your knee? They hit and your knee goes up, right? Or your leg goes up, I'm sorry. Your leg goes up because they, they hit them there. And again, so when you hit them there, because this is going in, it's going to cause this to stretch just a little bit. When you do that, now a signal sent causing this to contract. And when it contracts, the leg goes up. At the same time, we're telling this to relax here. Now, let's take a look at how the Golgi tendon works. In fact, if we were to go like this, it's going to be kind of the opposite with the Golgi uh, tendon organ. So if I were to go like this here, and where I find the Golgi tendon organ is going to be in the tendons that you see right here. So let me just fix this up real quick and it's going to be in the tendons, right? So now I'm gonna draw, you have a whole bunch of these in here, but uh, now I'm gonna draw my Golgi tendon organ. Now the Golgi tendon organ does not play a role in the reflex. So here's what's going to happen now. Whereas before we were looking at a quick stretch or a, a lengthening of this, right, or stretch, as we looked at a quick lengthening of this, we got the signal that caused this to contract. Because it was lengthened, we contracted backwards. The Golgi tendon is going to do the opposite. So let's say that you're at the gym and you're trying to, th you're trying to do some squats, right? You're doing some squats and you're really stretching your leg, or, in this, or you're doing some curls. As you're doing the curls, if the weight is too much, this, what this is going to do is this is going to sense it's going to sense the tension on tendons. Because what we don't want to do is overdo it and tear this tendon out. So what this is going to do here is the opposite now. This, if, if, we're, if we're doing something, this is going to measure the, the rate of contraction or how hard it's contracting, right? So it's going to measure the strength of contraction, of the muscle contraction. Okay, so it's going to measure the strength of the muscle contraction. So now, you go to pick up something heavy. This starts to sense this is more than we can handle. This is going to do the opposite here. What this is going to do now, let me get, I'm going to use the color red so I can distinguish it from there a little bit. This is going to send a signal that is going to go up into here. It's going to do basically the same thing. I'm just going to come over here. And we do have interneurons for both of these here. And then what's going to happen is I am going to have a signal that is going to come out now to the muscle and what it's going to do 
is it's going to tell this muscle to relax. Whereas with the muscle spindle, we told it to contract. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna tell it to relax. And when it relaxes, the reason we do that is so we can drop whatever it is, right? Because we, we don't want to tear this tendon. So the Golgi, Golgi tendon organ, when it senses the pressure is too much or the tension is too much on the tendon, it tells the muscle to relax. So it re inhibits, inhibits, right? Just like we saw with the reciprocal inhibition. In this case, it's going to cause muscle relaxation. Okay, or inhibit. Okay, it's going to inhibit the muscle contraction, right? At the same time now, whereas before we saw this, the, we saw this coming back and causing this to relax when this contracted on the muscle spindle, what's going to happen now is we also, well, this is going to be on another nerve, so let me, this is going to be kind of confusing. But anyways, what's going to happen now is this is going to come out. This should all be inside the spinal cord. This is going to come out, and now it's going to tell this opposite muscle to contract. So once again, when it was the muscle spindle, this lengthened, right? And then in response, it contracted. And when this contracted, this relaxed. That's what the muscle spindle. With the Golgi tendon organ, we have the opposite happening here. We, the Golgi ten, tendon organ realizes there's too much pressure or too much tension on the tendon. The muscle's contracting too hard, which is putting too much tension on the tendon. It sends a signal that then comes around and tells this now to relax. And, when, and at the same time, it tells this to contract. So that way you can drop something all of a sudden, right? So that's the difference between these two, the muscle spindle, senses lengthening, and causes contraction. And reciprocal inhibition. Right? So it makes the, the muscle, the other muscle, the opposite muscle relax. With the Golgi tendon organ, what's going to happen is it senses muscle contraction. Right? And when it senses muscle contraction, it causes muscle inhibition. and the opposite muscle is going to contract, or we call it the antagonist. Okay, so that's the difference between my Golgi tendon organ and my muscle spindles. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, if you learned something, uh, please hit like and please subscribe to my channel if you like what you saw. Thank you so much for watching.